Hello and welcome back to the Nords. We are now declaring war on Whiterun, who we basically have encircled. And our goal is take Whiterun, take Winterhold, take the bottom right of the map. That gets us all of Eastern Skyrim and it allows us to trigger the decision. That's the plan. We're also going to leave Hial March alone because, well, um, we need somebody to trigger the decision against. So, let's go. Let's clear out this to start with. We don't need any of that. Do we need an ally? We can call in Hial March. That's just really funny because it's completely against, um, you know, their interests for us to win the war. So, of course, I'll call them in. Right. Now, um, we are in a rather unique position in this war because we can choose where we want to raise our troops um, because like over here we could raise them over here we could raise them we, we could basically have a border of every single part of their empire and there's a very obvious part for us to raise our troops sheer point why well because it's two provinces away from their capital it's like ideal for us to attack here so let's raise our troops and let's go i mean on the counterpoint in theory they can do the same to us but our capital is much further away and much more difficult to get, so um, it's not going to work out for them. They also have significantly less troops. So, let's go. That's fine. Hial March said they'll join. Oh, if you're going this way, I'm definitely going this way. Fellow connoisseur, my vassal Lady Lamy accosts me. Well, met liege, I've heard tell of your patronage of Yan Ahe, the weaver. They say she is weaving a representation of a glorious battle worthy of a high king. Please, take this and give it to her. I wouldn't want to miss the chance to aid in the creation of a masterpiece. Lamy has interest in, many, in, in a great many things, among them precious artifacts and mines which produce them. So and say, how generous. Oh, I'll make sure she gets that, or no, prithee, keep it. Oh, obviously we'll make the artifact better. That's fine. Let's go. Right. Four months in this siege? I think we just take it. Yeah. They're heading this way. That's fine. Take the siege. King Hifadmir's friendship. This is the person I'm in war with? No, this is Winterhold. Never mind. Um, I never expected I would grow as close to King Hifadmir as I have done in the past few years. On multiple occasions, he has proven himself to be a reliable and forthright man with only my best interest at heart. Let's become friends. I mean, I'm going to take his land soon, but let's become friends. Right, and now we can attack around here. We bonded at the dance in Riften. Oh, okay. Right, a sensual proposal. Um, wherever I go, my guest Emfrid is sure to follow. That look in her eyes, the words on her lips. I know exactly what she's after. Let's try to see if there's any of these that gives us prestige. No. Okay. Um, let's lay with her. Uh, we crouch side by side, the flighty heart in front of us, unaware of her presence. My own attention is unwavering, especially of um, as Enfred's dress brushes against me. When I reach over to embrace her, I find that she has also had her attention elsewhere. As the heart disappears into the mountains, her naked flesh is already cradled by the soft earth as well as each other. Ah, so it doesn't look like we actually get any prestige from that side of things. I thought we might, but it looks like we don't. You think we're going to lose this? We have double their troops. I mean, it is mountains, but still, you think we're going to lose? Also, I'm not going to lead this army. Are you crazy? There we go. It thinks we're going to lose. In what world are we going to lose this? You know, I honestly just want to see. Um, Romance Intruder. Every time I close my eyes, I can see High Queen Ondi's face. Sleep will not come. I cannot wait another moment. Close in shadows and make my way to her castle. The sight of Ondi's uh, chamber window makes my heart stutter. So close yet so far. But wait, who is that? Climbing up the tower, the shady figure stops by Ondi's window and unlatches the shutters. Um, well, my darling is in danger. I must save her. Go. The sounds, uh, the sounds of struggle from above is the greatest motivator I've ever known. Without care for life and limb, I hoist myself through High Queen Ondi's window. I feel as though I've plunged into a frozen lake. Ondi is on the floor of the intruder, pushing her down, a gleaming blade between them. With a roar, I grab the villain by the collar and throw him into the wall. The rest is a blur. When the danger is over, I turn towards her. Ondi, are you alright? I ask cautiously. As if my words were a spell, she finally unfreezes, throws herself into my arms. Thank kind you are here, Rorlack. Okay. Ah, and we get this is how we gain prestige. I see. 
Well, let's uh, become her soulmate. My own wife. I'm confused. My wife, Ondi, says she no longer wishes to be my lover. What? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Ondi. My bad, I guess. Don't know what I did in the, the half a second, but my bad. Um, right, let's just find somebody else to sleep with. Lydia twice stabbed? Why is the debug menu open? Is it open for everyone? That's weird. Is the console working? No? Why is the debug menu open then if the console isn't working? Um... I don't know what I did to unlock the debug menu. That is weird. I don't think it was open earlier in the episode. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a brief pause, I'm going to reload, and hopefully the debug menu will be gone when we reload. Right, and we're back. So, why was the debug menu open? Well, as I found out, Elder Kings has been updated to the latest version of the game. Fantastic. However, this means that if you were running on a previous version of Crusader Kings 2, a whole bunch of weird stuff is going to happen, which we have now fixed by updating Crusader Kings 2 to the latest version of the game. So we're actually running on a different version of the game than we were um, mere seconds ago for you. Um, what does that change? Almost nothing. It adds in the change that I talked about um, many, many episodes ago where you can now see um, the list of agents who would join a, um, like a murder plot even if nobody would actually join right now. So you know if you have a plot open, let's just pick someone like Bruma, right? Let's just say there. You see her as this invite to? If we were to invite these two, previous version of the game, you would not be able to see the list. You wouldn't be able to go, oh, this person's only negative 43 away. If we made them like us, maybe they would join the uh, thing, right? Um, while now you can, basically. I'm not going to kill Bruma. I just needed an example. Right. Anyway, back to our war. It still thinks we're going to lose. Let's see what happens. Oh, I probably should have gone speed 5 into that, but that's okay. So... Everybody's now in here. We have double their troops. I honestly don't see how we can lose. Like, I think we're, we're gonna crush it. Yeah, we're absolutely crushing it. Wait a second. Are we getting the attacker or the defender bonus? Yeah, we're also getting the defender bonus. So why did it ever think we were gonna lose here? Yeah. I guess it thought they were gonna get the defender bonus, and that was gonna allow them the, um the win, but like, no, it's our land. We get the defender bonus. Yeah, okay. Weird. Oh, wait a second. It might be. No, no, we would always get the defender bonus. Yeah, if I understand it correctly. Okay, don't know why it thought that we wouldn't. Okay, weird. I was thinking that maybe it was because they had other armies that were joining in, so we had an army there, but they were attacking into us, so maybe it changed at some point, but no, I don't think so. I don't think that's how it works. Uh, at least not for that particular bit of land, because we have a fort here, which should mean that we always get the defender bonus. If I understand that correctly? Maybe that doesn't even matter. I might be thinking of Crusader Kings 2, uh, as I often do. Right, I can ransom you back for some money? Yeah, sure, 100 gold sounds good, given I'm losing 33 gold a month. What happened? Um, raised armies cost a lot of money? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just going to quickly check my vassals as well. Anybody not paying me anything? Like you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just fix you. Definitely fix you as well. Can't modify yours. Okay. Uh, anyone else? This person? Nope. Anyone else? You? Hag Queen Ondi, my wife, otherwise known as. Yeah, she can pay us a little bit of money. Um, yeah, a lot. Definitely pay us a little bit of money. Definitely just need anything that we can grab here. I did not realize how dire our um, financial situation was until this exact second. Do that one as well. Um, oh, you. Yeah, based on opinion, war declaration. There we go. You are paying us stuff. How about based on opinion instead of devotion? You would pay us the same either way. Okay. How about you? There we go, that seems good. You'll pay us zero and zero. That seems fine. Right, uh, clear that out. And then, now that we've done all of that, we're making, you know, an extra four gold a month. Let's also go in here. 
I know that we're currently uh, raising control. I think we would be better off organizing our army for the 20% off on our army maintenance. Yeah. So now we're only losing 17 a month. That seems much better. That's, that's, that's much more maintainable. <laughs> Especially as we're about to gain 100. Yeah, okay. That, that's something that we can work with. Now we now we got many, many months of war that we can work. Uh, that we can uh, survive through. Right, you. Um, sure, let's do a recruitment. Right. Uh, one thing the patch also changed was a bunch of AI stuff. It just reminded me there. To do with like AI marriages and things. But like all of that was thing ones where it now works more in a common sense way. So it doesn't really, like, you know, it doesn't matter as much because it should just work as you thought it was work going to work in the first place. So that's fine. The Child of our Dynasty. Um, Berna. Okay. I, I love the human, um, like, skin stuff going on here with the elf forehead. That, that is such a good look. I mean, it's, it's quite funny. Um, Yan Ahe. Okay, has created us a tapestry. It is garble. Okay, I mean, it gives us renown, but, like, it's it's truly awful. Um, that's fine. Let's just continue sieging. We probably don't need to siege with an 18,000-man army. That seems like a little bit of an overkill thing for our siege. We might do some splitting up of our army for the next one. Actually targeting us disbanded. That's nice. What's this? Oh, that's the new thing that we literally just got. Right. Next one. Uh, so now we're heading to Whiterun itself to siege. Let's see how many men we need to siege it, and then we'll know like where we're at. So it's 19 months. We need 2,000. So I'm going to split our army in actual half. Um, we're then going to take this one. We're going to take the siege units from it. And they're going to stay here. Then we're going to choose the army that doesn't have any siege units. Uh, this one. And we're going to move you back. Cool. Um, oh, that advantage in this location um, thing on the uh, tooltip. That's new. That's definitely new. Okay, interesting. I'm sure that's new. Weird. Okay, I like it. But I'm fairly certain I've never seen that before in my life. Right. Merge up. Um, what's this supply here? About 4,000. Yeah, so we're looking to split this army in three, ideally. Yeah, so I guess we'll split it into uh, quarters. That's fine. Um, yeah, let's select them all. You're going to go there, deselect, there, deselect, there, deselect, there. Oh, I see one person going to stay where you are, right? Yeah. Cool. Unless I just left two, I left two standing there. Oops. Yeah, you're going to head backwards, and then these guys are going to go somewhere else. That's fine. And then we'll siege. This is going to be 18 months. Okay, well, once these guys get some supply, we'll probably head into a halted uh, stream. I mean, right now, um, where nobody's getting ticking war score, so we're happy to just siege. They're, they're sieging towards um, Falkreath, but that doesn't matter, because that's not our capital. So we should be fine. Um, professional workforce lowers construction time. I would like uh, increased tax efficiency, mainly because I'm thinking I should probably switch you on to uh, collecting taxes, just so that we save a little bit more money. There we go. Hey, you made somebody like me more. Which is good, because all of our uh, vassals pay us based on opinion. So, that seems good. Verity, charmed vassal. Our dog has charmed somebody. Nice. It's going to be 16 months for your siege. Yeah, it's going to take some time, right? 15 months now. I have a daughter called Ondi. Okay, sure. Um, one thing I just want to check. Did that change our succession? Yes, yes it did. Okay, so that means we would lose Falcon Star in succession now. Oh well. There's pretty much nothing we can do about that. If we create another kingdom, we could solve that issue. Actually, maybe. No, because you're getting the kingdom of Falkreath. Yeah, if we create a third kingdom, then we can give away a third kingdom, but it doesn't help too much. Okay. It's just stuff to think about. Right. And now we just siege. Um, calmly, not really anything to do. Um, my wife, High Queen Ondi, has been tense lately. As we find ourselves alone, it becomes apparent why. Please be honest with me. Is there someone else? Have you taken a lover? No. 
Okay. Let's go speed 5. They don't seem to be fighting back here. This is fine. Just keeping an eye on Haunting Brew, which is where they're going to come through. And... Oh, that actually went back. You could see it, us being hit by a negative event there. Uh, we need a new steward. New steward's going to be Raloff. He seems good at the job. Right. We're about to go into negative income, but we're about to get this siege done as well. And we got it. Okay, we got 42 gold. Did we get anyone else? No. Okay. Our wife is pregnant. Uh, let's grab a couple of battering rams off of here. They're going to head up to this one. And then I'm going to give you those two armies. Okay, let me try that again. Those two armies. There we go. You're going to head with it. This army is going to split in two. I'm going to send one back there. We'll see how things go after that. Perfect. Uh, you're going to move up to that location. And we'll just basically let everyone get their supplies back. These guys can now merge up. If I can actually select them. There we go. Oh, they're over here. That's why I couldn't select them. Merge. Perfect. How long is the siege going to take? Four months. Love it. Um, how much do they have from sieging our land? 8%. Okay, so we're, we're doing much better than they are. That's fine. Parity, the meeting. Uh, our dog is going to be at the meeting. With another dog. Okay. Um... My brother, Prince Erich, and I find the two dogs after a while in the middle of some rigorous copulating. Verity, how could you let that mutt? He trails off, but I can see anger in his eyes. Well, it's only natural. Yeah, okay, so Prince Erich was not happy. Um, I'm going to send these two armies here up to Feldlow just to start a siege. It's probably going to take a while, but that's okay. Um, we are bankrupt. Uh, for a weak favor, you'll give me 300 gold. We can confiscate church property for 300. I will 100% do that. Yep. Because um, piety matters not in like one bit to us. Let's ransom off some prisoners here while we're just, you know, not doing very much. Get another 10 gold. How long is that going to take? Eight months. Yeah, it's slow, but it will eventually get us war score. Uh, you're going to head down to Honing Brew. You're going to head there. And you're going to head there. Right, go. We have another daughter called Tilda. Okay, that's not ideal. Like, could we have less daughters? Our succession is looking a little bit um, messed up. Luckily, this one doesn't actually seem to inherit, but that's, you know, still not ideal. Right. Um, They're now going to siege here. Five months left. Wonderful. We can ransom you for another 10 gold. Love it. And then we can start working our way into this army there. Uh, we should be fine if they attack us. Yeah, they're not going to attack us. That oh, they're going to attack here. We'll merge up. Um, I'm only going to leave just. To, I'm actually going to try and leave enough for the siege and then send the rest here. There we go. That works. Uh, once you finish your siege, that'll be fine. Right, go. Merge up the thirteen thousand. We're going to aim to attack them. Uh, we're not going to lead. We're going to put. Uh, we're actually going to hire you and stick you in charge. Let's go. And we're going to move around like that. We should win, I think. There we go. Easily, easily won. And we will enforce our demands. Look at that. So, Lendman Stapa gets this land. He also then becomes my vassal. Perfect. And we get three hundred fame for this. Done. So be it. And if we zoom out, ho, 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 that is fantastic. Yeah, love it. Love it. Okay, let's change your contract. Uh, your contract is already mostly fine. Uh, just trying to think what I want to do for you here. If there's anything I can do that would make me happy. Maybe forced partition would be okay. Apparently it makes them pay more taxes. Um... Interesting. We could do that. I mean, it does have green next to taxes, which implies they're paying more on it. Hmm. Okay. We could do that and use a hook. It means he dislikes us by five, but he has to have partition as his law. And it also means that we get more money. Yeah, sure. Is that really true? No. This doesn't seem to in any way affect the income it's giving us yet. On the tooltip, it quite clearly says it will. You know what? I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to keep the hook. That's fine. Right. 
I can transfer you to your rightful liege. So this is the this land down here in Riverwood. Sure, why not? That seems fine. So they now hold a little bit more land. Wonderful. Um, that was our court mage, apparently. So we need a new one of those. Uh, let's just see if we've got one before we go off hiring uh, somebody new. Uh, where are we? Court mage. Court mage. This one. We have an average person. What what um, spells do you have, average person? You have no magic perks. Okay. You have no magic perks. Okay. Let's hire somebody then. Uh, hire a court mage. No, I would like to search for a court mage using this thing. There we go. Right. Uh, who's here? Sanguine bonding. Our High King truly is generous, Elgrim. Just taste the spectacular baked truffles. Mm, indeed, Lord Rorlach must be most implacable, much like this apple tart. Um, we could join them for some food. It might make us fat, but that's okay. We'll take the risk. Okay. Court Mage. So we have this dude who has nothing that we want. And you who has no magic perks. Okay, so. Um, blue, green. Uh, so it's... Three blue, two green, one white. So, um, oh, that's fine. I just want to open the spell book. So, two blue, Daedra. Up to absorb skill here. All right. And then one white, resilience. Okay. Uh, we'll take him. He's very expensive, but we'll take him. Uh, and then we can do some spells on ourselves. Oh, I was also told I should check our spell book um, for rituals. Um. Or, like, there's a ritual thing I can do here. Open rituals. There we go. Um, because even if we don't have any um, actual ability to cast spells, we potentially have the ability to do a ritual on ourselves. We don't, apparently. But, like, I guess if we had more, um, like, arcana, we could. Like, if we just had excess um, magic, we could do that. Interesting. Anyway, we can't do that, so that's fine. Let's go back to our mage. Uh, actually, no, I want to go back to us on our mage. So I want to change the caster to you. And then I just want to see what resilience is. Resilience is a small health boost. We could do that. What are these ones? So fortify walls makes your walls fortified, obviously. Dispel spells negative effects. You don't have journeyman alteration? I thought you had level 3. It's level 3 blue. Oh, you can go to banish Daedra. I might do summon Daedra at some point. That gets us extra arcana, actually. Yeah, okay, we could try that. Um, That's all fine. That's all fine. Right. Cool. So now we have this. How are we looking at Exalted Monks Men? We're about 1.6 away. Now, a couple things were pointed out to me. One, if we're able to create titles, which we are if we actually had money, um, then we could create some titles Creating the titles would give us prestige, and then that would lead into Exalted Amongst Men, which is good. The other thing is that we're allowed to raid. So if we raid people, we can then get gold back, and we can get prestige back. Which all makes a lot of sense. So, maybe we'll raise some raiders. Wait, where did these guys come from? We must have inherited those. I don't remember, uh, like, buying them. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, right. Let's go over here, raise some people, and then maybe we can go for a raid. Like over here, we'll raise some uh, local raiders. See what happens. A touch of romance. Uh, we'll get the opinion. Cool. That's a lot of raiders. And down here. Into one pile. Merge up. And then we're going to go, not with you leading, with you leading. We're going to go to teeth. We're going to raid. Wonderful. Then we're going to head over here. Do the same thing. Just grab some stuff and then head back to base. Which will then give us... Look at that. We get 53 gold, prestige, and piety. Oh, and it gets us two renown and development growth. Look at that. Fantastic. And that's pushing us towards exalted amongst men. Wonderful. Let's go for a little raid over here into these guys' territory. They don't really have any troops to fight us. Um, You want to give me some renown and some prestige? Lovely. Do a little raid here. Then we'll just push ourselves further in. Do a little raid here. 
and a little raid here. And then over here, uh, this way, do a little raid. The council meeting, my dog's going to join us, obviously. A snake at court. Um, somebody has for doing fornification. Oh, no. Right, uh, let's head over here to Upper Craglord. Uh, let's go in here. We get 25 gold for you. And another 25 gold in a second. Nice. Oh, somebody needs to marry. Erich. Erich, you are going to marry... Wait, were you not the person who married... Yeah, you are the person who married the elf. How did you die? In childbirth. Oh. Okay. Well... Uh, let's find you somebody to marry with a good trait. And then, why don't you marry, you know, this elf instead? Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Just marry elves. Right, go. Carry on. Uh, our dog got a 75 prestige. Wonderful. Uh, they've accepted the marriage. And we're heading over here. Uh, I don't really want to go to your feast. Right. We captured more prisoners, and we're heading back to base. I think I'll just disband the raiders and then re-raise them somewhere else in a second. You would like to pay 25 gold for this person? Lovely. Wonderful. Um, you don't want to pay any gold for this person? Um, I'm going to demand their conversion and release them. Wonderful. Then we'll head back to base. We got 420 gold, prestige, and piety, and more renown, and development growth. It's fantastic. I'm not going to go to your thing. We'll just disband our troops. And then we can just move around here and just go and do this everywhere. Like Evermore. Do the same thing here. Actually, this north point looks better, right? Because we can just siege all the way along the coast. Yeah, let's do that. So rally point. There. Raise local raiders. And then we just do the same thing. Our wife is pregnant again. That's, uh, something. And we got a new stewardship perk. Wonderful. So, um, let's do that in a second. We also discovered someone's secrets. We'll get rid of that one. No prisoners are left. What's this? Gift artifact. You would like to give me a memory of Hamvir. Okay, it retells the story of when Jarl Yoldings of Eastmarch's first child, Hamvir, a beautiful boy, was born. Alright, sure. I'll take it. Uh, we've also got this thing. Oh, that's the artifact we literally just got given. Um, in here, I think we take building construction time down. Not that it matters too much, but it gets us closer to good stuff. And uh, nothing we need to worry about there. Right. Back to some raiding, I think. We got that one. We captured somebody's wife. Let's head around this way. So, what are we going to do with you? Can we ransom you back? Yeah, 25 gold. Wonderful. Uh, what's this one? Oh, that's still the artifact that we need to look at. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Got rid of the uh, new artifact thing. Go in here. You can't raid that one? Yes, it's maybe been raided too recently. There we go. Got the next one. And get the next one. And then the next one. Uh, we need to ransom you back for some money. Wonderful. We're making tons of money here. Fire and Blood. The settlement of Dunlane Falls, an important stronghold in Greater Morkulden, has fallen to my raiders. We have the run of vast tracts of land, and many of the quivering subjects and shining treasures of Chiefdess uh, Bulklak to choose from. Okay, so we get prestige and get more loot, or we've taken enough. Oh yeah, definitely like raid it more. And then up the top here, we'll get the last one. Wonderful. And then back here. What did we get from that? We got 135 plus an extra 19 there. Wonderful. Right, we'll then just disband these troops. And we'll go raid somewhere else. Uh, we could hold an exotic feast. That would get us some prestige. Let's do it. Let's hold the feast. It's a cheery gathering. The high table breaks. The great table seating the upper nobility on the dais gave a loud crack. And a moment later... It gave in under the weight of food and gilded decoration. All right, what a great night. Priest Trillith became my friend. Um, what's in a name? With the babe cradled in her arm, High Queen Onni looks up at me, head held high, and eyes glowing with pride. My love, let us name him Rorlach after you. Ooh, he's robust. Wonderful idea. 
and we've become friends with Priest Trilath. Or this is because we're friends with Priest Trilath, we got more benefits. Oh, cool. And then more prestige. Wonderful. Uh, did that cause any succession issues? No, nope. I think we're far enough down that we're not splitting our land anymore. This is where I think high partition would come in uh, handy for us, because then we wouldn't have to give away all these extra titles, but uh, we're still a little bit off getting that, because we have to get heraldry, and to get heraldry, as we previously looked at, we need to be on, like, the next tech, I think. Yeah, we need to be on, like, the next tech group, which we can't even get for a while. For another, like, 57 years, so, yeah. Hold off on that one. Right. Now we've had our feast. We're going to need to hold court. There we go. Right. Next one. A traitor uncovered. One of my guards approaches with my daughter-in-law, uh, Madura, in chains trailing behind him. Okay. So this person. I caught Madura here in the process of sending sensitive information to foreign spies in North Point. What should we do with her? Off of her head. I forgive once or I have a different plan. I forgive once gets us a strong hook. Um, it seems my vassal, Alderman Thryn, has been nursing a temper while awaiting an audience. My lord, I cannot abide your tolerance of infidels like Baroness Dagny in the realm, even amidst the nobility. Who? Um, yeah, you must convert. Definitely. Um, just trying to see. Will she actually just convert? Um, maybe. I've now seen the truth. I convert to the Druidic cult. Okay. Um, I judge a woman by their quality, not their beliefs, or all faiths are welcome. Um, I say all faiths are welcome. It does lose us some opinion, but like every non-Nordic pantheon vassal gains opinion with us, which is probably a few. A haggard looking peasant now stands in front of me. My lord, I beg for your help. A monster prowls the mountains of wayward past, killing cattle and farmers alike. Alright, well, I could set, give him 300 gold. Send my master of the hunt to go and kill it. Well, that would seem like the best option. My personal champion will go and kill it. That's a slightly more chance of success. Both of these are Swanhaver. I shall fell the beast, or that sounds like your problem. Uh, I'm going to send Swanhaver to kill it. Oh, actually, no. One was Erich and one was Swanhaver, but she succeeded. Wonderful. Um, and that got us more prestige. We're getting there. We're getting there. How much are we missing? We're missing about 500. We could go raid House Redoran. Oh, never mind. They're um, incredibly strong. Yeah, okay. Let's maybe not raid them. How about Bruma? Bruma seems like a good one to raid. Except that that's a mountain. But, you know. We could raid down here. Uh, raise local raiders. That seems like enough. And then we just go in here and raid. Do a little raiding. Head to Apple Watch. Do a little bit more raiding. Okay. Clandestine Arena. Your left approaches me with interesting news. A shack found among a rarely used path of my domain has been discovered as a meeting point for local pit fighters who organize clandestine meetings among themselves for profit. How bad could it be? The people rejoice. We gain prestige and Solitude has got the uh, arena. Okay, so that's up here. Popular opinion goes up there. Nice. Okay, cool. Head back down this way. Um, we've finished that siege. Yeah, let's head into this one and just siege a little bit of that. Charger, horse enthusiast. My brother Prince Erich looks Charger up and down, nodding approvingly. It is a mighty fine horse you have here, my high king. If you would allow me to take him for a ride, I'd be very grateful. No one rides Charger but me. I need the prestige. Cool. Head back to base. And a couple of new prisoners. One will get ransomed. You nobody wants, so I guess we'll just recruit you. Cool. Wonderful. Verity, feet and paws. We are walking our dog. Wonderful. We gained some prestige and our level of fame has gone up. Wonderful. Even with more development coming in as well. So good. We are known as the Snow Leopard now. Ooh. Okay. Cool. And now we can vassalize you. So this is, uh, Heartwood. Yes, I would love to vassalize you. And we can designate a guardian for Yolding. Yolding is doing a stewardship education. 
We don't really have anyone good. Couldn't. You will educate them. Will not be trained in the art of magicka. Oh, well that's a new bit of a pop-up. Uh, okay. That sounds fine. Yeah, do it. Right. Wait a second or two. We now have that land. Now we should be able to in a second. There we go. Vassalize the next one. Cool. And now in a second. We can vassalize the next two. Crystal Drift. And Gold Isle. Nice. And then we can vassalize you as well. Okay. Transfer people to the correct vassals. And then, in a second, we can vassalize you. Wonderful. So look at that. We took all of that land without doing anything. All we had to do was raise our prestige. Or, or and in turn, raise our fame. Now, winter holds. I'm not able to offer you vassalization because we don't have living legend. You would say no anyway. So, I need to get winter hold somehow. Do I have a playback and press? Don't believe I do. So that means that we're probably going to have to press seize all the Jure lands, which we can't do. How about the Jure Kingdom Winterhold? That would work. I don't think he actually holds the Rift and the Pale. No. So we would get Winterhold. Worst comes to the worst. These two bits become duchy level titles, and then we can just vassalize them. Yeah. Yeah, that seems fine. Let's declare a war on Winterhold, and then... I think I'm going to end... Oh, actually, never mind. Transfer you. Then, I think I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.